Yes, here is your Ranjana, ma'am. And this time it is grammar. And the thing which is always a thorn in your grammar is preposition. So I have come up with a small video on preposition. I'll be dealing in bits and parts why so that you all remember it better. But let me remind you, if you have not subscribed to my channel up till now, please do. And don't forget to press the like button after having gone through the video because I'm sure you will like it. So let's watch. Hello students. Yes, here I am. Your very own Ranjana ma'am. And yes, this time grammar. ICSC, IAC, anyone. It will be helpful why I am coming out with something which is important for both of you all and you all find it confusing. Yes, what is it? Prepositions. Most often, you are confused and you commit the most mistakes here. I have found many of my students also saying, Ma'am, other things we'll handle. But what about the preposition? So yes, there are some prepositions which are quite confusing. We are always wondering as to what to use. One of them is between and among. Though many of you would yes say yes, between and among what's there. But some of you don't know the difference. When to use between and among. So, suppose we are talking of two people. Then what do we use? Between. Like the two brothers shared the property of their father between themselves. Why? Because here it is two. But suppose the brothers were more in number. After two, if it is three, four, five or whatever, the list is endless. It will become among. The sweets were distributed among the children of the class. So this gives you an idea that naturally the children in the class were more than two. So when it is two, it is between. When it is more than two, it is among. So keep this in mind. Many times I have seen that when it is more than two and yet many of my students or many uh, other students also, they write among. When it is more than two, they don't write among. When it is two, they write among. No, that is wrong. When it is two, it is between. When it is more than two, it is among. Another confusion occurs regarding beside and besides. So beside and besides, what the, they are not really similar in meaning. There is nothing to do with beside. They are not brothers or like this. Beside. What does it mean? Beside means by the side. Ravi sat beside his father, beside his brother, beside his friend, by the side. And besides, what does it mean? In addition to, like suppose, uh, besides English, I also know French and Latin. That means I know English, but in addition to it, I know these two languages. Besides owning a car, he also owns a bus. That means in addition to a car, he also owns a bus. In addition to. So, beside and besides, they are not related. They have nothing to do with each other. It's not, not like play and plays. They are verbs. Play and plays, both are present tense verbs. But beside is a preposition, so is besides. And the meaning is very, very different. So, I hope next time you won't have a problem. Not only that. Uh, yes, since, for and from, this is where I find the most confusion. Since and from, both of them are point of time. So why do we use since in one and from in the other? Because since takes the perfect verb. I'll give you an example. 
आई हैव बीन इल डैश मंडे मंडे इज अ पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वट विल इट बी फ्रॉम और सिंस सिंस वाई हैव बीन इल हैव इज अ परफेक्ट वर्ब आई होप यू नो वट द परफेक्ट वर्ब्स आर हैज हैव हैड दे आर योर परफेक्ट वर्ब्स has been doing have been doing had been doing all of them has had and have they are your perfect verbs so when you have these and the point of time then it is since and when the point of time is there but it is not in the perfect form then it will be from like uh, i can give you an example he uh, he is living in mumbai from 2010 or he is living in mumbai that means he is still doing so he is doing his homework from 3 o'clock point of time he is doing his homework he is still doing the action is continuing but if it had a perfect verb what would we have written since and another preposition which is quite related to time this was point of time when do we use for for is used for a period of time like he has been absent for the last few days he has been living in mumbai for the last few years he has been working in this in this company for the last few months so for the last few months last few days last few years all of them they denote a point of time uh, sorry a period of time and when there is a period of time we use for so for for period of time since point of time from point of time but what is the difference between since and from since takes a perfect verb and from doesn't that's the difference it's simple keep this in mind most often the mistakes in preposition are because of this so what else like uh, on and over like suppose he is sitting on the table the baby is sitting on the table so what does it mean on top of it and he is uh, sorry on an act the baby is sitting on the table many times i see my students writing i am sitting on the table when they mean to say that they are sitting at the table on means you are on the surface and at is the position normally which we do when we write or study or whatever we do that is he is at his table he is not sitting on the table so on and at and then not only that regarding places quite a few mistakes in and at in for big places at for small places like he lives at uh, you can uh, mention a small village uh, he lives at um, what can we say uh, give the name of a place at ultodanga in kolkata in comparison to kolkata ultodanga is a small place or he lives at lake town in kolkata kolkata is a big place so when it is a big place it is the name of a town or a city or a country which is geographically quite extensive then we use in and comparatively when it refers to small places we use at another thing you must have noticed preposition is very funny and there is no logical reason why we use this preposition here and there so for this you need a lot of practice and also practice your phrasal verbs if you want to do well in your prepositions for phrasal verb i will come up with a fresh video and before i end one more thing like we say regarding the time of the day what do we say in the morning in the afternoon in the evening in the night no at night why no answer 
but this is how it happens we can't say in the in night in the evening yes in the darkness of the night is okay but he had his uh, supper or rather he had his uh, dinner as we say in the night no wrong he had his dinner at night at night he arrived at night whereas it is in the morning in the afternoon and in the evening so for the four three are in and one is at which one the last one so i'll come up with some more videos of preposition if i give a big video then you all will get bored so i'll pick up small small pieces and come up and discuss so that it makes an interesting watching you will be interested in watching it you won't feel bored next would be phrasal verbs because you know your prepositions are the ones which are the real villains and will give you a lot of trouble as my students suggest so goodbye for the time being have a nice time